Kelly, I see you're rocking the Aviara shirt today. Oh, thank you for noticing, of course, because that is the brand we are focusing on today. Exciting. Uh -huh. All right. Well, tell, tell everybody what's coming up on today's boating broadcast. Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of Boating Broadcast with Marine Max. Uh, our headlines for today are we're going to be talking BoatTest.com's review of the all-new Sea Ray Sundancer 320, the 2021 Super Air Nautique G21 walkthrough with Sean Murray is up, mm -hmm. so if you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. We'll play a little bit of it today. And a great white shark bites boats in the Gulf of Mexico right off Right outside here, Tampa Bay. So uh, pretty crazy, huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> not looking forward to that story. Oh my gosh. Speaking of Tampa Bay, our special guest today is uh, Christy Lamb, who is an owner of an Aviar AB32, and uh, she lives in the Tampa Bay area. So she's gonna be talking about some of her favorite places to bring that beautiful Aviar boat. And Landon talking uh, fun fishing videos and uh, some cool nature stuff as usual. So you gotta stay tuned. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast. We are your hosts. I am Lisa, and that guy over there, his name is Kelly. Say hi to the folks. Hello. Good afternoon, good morning, <laughs> and good evening. Please interact with us in the comment section. We are uh, around and we can answer questions and give you some links to some more information. And please share this with your friends and family. If you enjoy what you see today, we'd love to uh, invite more people to tune in. Boating is always fun. And for oh, yeah. our audio only listeners, thank you for joining us. If you'd like to see what you're hearing, you can always find us on Facebook and YouTube. Just search for Marine Max. Uh, you'll find us there. Or you can access yep. us on the Marine Max website or through our app. Uh, underneath the lifestyles blog section so tons of ways to get your boating news and let's begin shall we first up we have headlines we're talking sea ray sundance for 320. awesome and our friends over at boattest.com uh shout out mm -hmm. to those guys uh they did a full review of the all-new sea ray sundance 320 and uh yeah what a new boat from sea ray i mean this thing is uh Hey, talk about Tampa Bay area too. I mean, this is a great place and a great boat to be on for this area, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And the the review that Boat Test, all the reviews that Boat Test do are uh, third party, uh, but they send out a captain, they go through the boat, they've gone through <laughs> probably millions of boats. So, <laughs> uh, you know, their perspective really? is a little bit different and, you know, they think about things that maybe you wouldn't have thought about and this is why this is here. So highly, yep. highly recommend checking out both boattest.com if you have not. Um, and of course, the, the Sundancer collection is just, you know, a staple on the waterways. When you see a Sundancer, you go, yep, there's Sea Ray. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, Sea Ray continues to innovate. And uh, and and you did mention boattest.com. I mean, it, they give you a different approach. It's not always just the glitz and glamour of a boat. They talk about the functionality um, in, in the features of each boat. So mm -hmm. kind of going through the specs, people love to see kind of, you know, hard top height. Hey, six foot nine, I, I could walk through that boat, Lisa, and not even hit yep. my head. It's that yep. kind of stuff that really make a difference to potential uh, buyers of a new boat. So absolutely, check out that Sun Dancer 320. Yep, and we will link to that in the transcript of today's notes, or you could Google boattest.com, Sundancer 320. That'll come up too. <laughs> All course. right, let's talk about another really cool boat. Uh, yep. So I saw this in the Nautique newsletter, and this is the review of the, or walkthrough of the 2021 Super Air Nautique G21. Yes. And it's with Sean Murray, who is a famous wake sport you know, influencer, a uh, really cool guy, just super talented, um, has accolades up and down the wall, I'm sure. Uh, but this was, uh, I thought this was really cool because this is a guy that uses these boats a lot and mm -hmm. beats them up and, and uses them for exactly what you want to use them for, you know, towing people. Uh, yep. So he goes through the boat and does a pretty detailed walkthrough. I thought this was really neat. Well, and he's the kind of guy you want to hear from when with a walkthrough of a boat like that. You don't, you know, some of these guys are like, I don't know anything about the boat, but I'm just going to walk through it. But the, I mean, Sean is, is you know, he's on, on these videos for a reason. He he runs these boats and he knows everything about them. So kind of walking through this all new uh, G21, uh, pretty much everything you could possibly want to know uh, about this this model of boat. And, and each and every model of boat from Nautique, they're really good online for, for full walkthroughs and mm -hmm. talk about specs and information about the new boats. Uh, 
certainly in in this G21 is that is sweet and it's starting to look like the Paragon a little bit is that just me or I feel like they're <laughs> they're starting to take some of those cues those you know different design features from the Paragon and putting them into the G series as well yeah no gorgeous bow tons of functionality tons of technology in there look at that storage, storage. Just pulled that out <laughs> yep of uh, oh my gosh yeah so highly recommend That's if you're into the wake sport situation you know, give this video uh, a look, see, it'll, it'll give you a lot of information. Yeah. And of course you can check out more at, uh, I think nautiqueboats.com and, and see these videos on there, build your own nautique. I was and, just uh, going to say, build a boat. <laughs> and just, yeah, look at that swim platform. Uh, just another uh, really cool model from nautique who, who continue to impress year after year and continue to innovate, which is, is, you know, you have to do for a brand like that. It's, it's mm -hmm. something that needs to be flashy and cool and, and high tech and clearly just looking at the lines of this one, they, they nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. cool. All right. I know this, this last one I'm a little nervous about Kelly. So uh, great, great white shark <laughs> bites a boat in the Gulf waters off Tampa Bay. Okay. Those are my waters that I swim in. And hey, well, it, they always, you know, start with this big headline, but again, sharks are your friends. What is it? Fish are friends, not food, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You have to, especially the sharks, you know, they're just testing things out and, and they're just, uh, uh, they're doing their own thing, but this is pretty cool that it's close to home and, uh, you wouldn't think great whites in the, in the Gulf, but, uh, that's, that's pretty neat that it was uh, here in the Tampa Bay area, huh? Yeah. Very cool. And I like the headline. It's like shark biting boat motors might not be what you think it is. And, and that's a Murado. Exploring. Look at that. that is a, heck yeah, it is. That's pretty cool. He's just exploring. He doesn't know what's what it is. So he came up to kind of stiff it out. Maybe he's a Mercury fan. Maybe he just loves those <laughs> outboards too. But that's, yeah, I mean, you know, those things, uh, the, the Great Whites travel just a, a ton. I'm sure if we had Landon on, he could tell us uh, specs and, and all that information about Great Whites in general. But, you know, they travel quite a long ways just to find food every year and every month and every day. So um, clearly this one's hanging out in the Gulf in some warmer waters and probably uh, thinking they found some food with that Mercury Verado. But I'm sure uh, soon after that, he found what he was looking for. Yeah. What, what an experience though. I, you know, yep. Check the water yeah, really before you cool. jump in. <laughs> yes, definitely check the water before you jump in. But, uh, it, it's just another cool thing that you can see boating too, though. I mean, it's not always just about right? swimming and stuff. If you get out there on the open water and see some, some cool, uh, you know, wildlife like this, that's, that's kind of also what boating is wow. all about. Yeah. What I would an give experience. anything to see a great white shark in, in the, the wild. That'd be such a cool thing. Well, you've just put it out into the atmosphere, so it, it'll happen next time you're uh, out on a boat. Yep. Great way. Be great careful way. what you wish for, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, very, very cool. And before we get into our interview, we have a special video treat just to kind of tease it up a little bit. So, Kelly, what do we have? What do we have coming up here? Well, what are, where is it? There we go. It's a little. Uh, there we go. A little something from Aviara. <laughs> Let's check it out. <laughs>
right, everyone, please welcome Christy Lamb, owner of Lady Bella Aviara 32. So we're going to get into that a little bit. Welcome to the awesome. program, Christy. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. And did you see Kelly is wearing his Aviara shirt? I just noticed that. Excellent. You know, I have one of those. I should have thought about it. I went with my uh, Clearwater Wine Bar shirt, but next Oh, <laughs> very That's nice. That's mine, too. And we'll definitely talk about that. All right. So to get things kicked off, let's talk a little bit about yourself and your boating background. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So my husband and I, well, we have been married for a million years. We've actually <laughs> been boating together for, I would say, more than 25 years. We just celebrated our 23rd wedding anniversary. Um, so we've been boating together since we were, you know, probably in high school. And um, both of us were originally from Kentucky. So we grew up on the lakes of Kentucky and Tennessee. Wow. Obviously, the Mastercraft um, brand has always been one that mm -hmm. um, has been legendary for us. My family, my particular family, my side of the family, we didn't really ever have any jewelry or any inheritance, but we had a 1977 vintage Mastercraft nice. our family heirloom. So my father rebuilt it, um, rehabbed it, gave it to my husband and I, and then once we um, moved through Gainesville, then down to Tampa, we passed it on to my sister in Nashville, and they used it up on Old Hickory Lake for years and years and years. So. Um, after that, we had, I think it was a 2008 Mastercraft. So always wakeboarding, um, uh -huh. surfing boats, um, always on the water, every weekend, camping, houseboats. I feel like, you know, I feel like we've probably done it all. Um, yeah. And one, you know, it was, it was strange. It was kind of right, probably exactly a year from now, a uh, year back. We were out on the water with some friends of ours. And I think one of them had a Boston Whaler, one of them had something else. And so they said, meet us out on the Gulf. And we had our um, Nautique, our, um, I think it was G23. And so we were like, yeah, okay, this is gonna be a great day on the water. And like an hour and a half later, who wants to come all the way around the channel, gotten over to the north side of the beach, you know, they're probably getting ready to pack up. It just, it took us forever to get out there. We're sitting there, we really can't anchor in close. Um, yeah. We didn't have that access. So we're just kind of, you know, hanging out. We're still having a great time. And we started thinking, you know, this wakeboard, wake surf thing might be something that was a beautiful past uh, yep. entertainment of ours. Maybe it's time to get something where we can zip out to the golf where we have a little bit more room, where we have a lot more stability. Um, so we, you know, we started taking a look at boats from there. But being on the water has been a passion for the both of us. Um, I think, you know, since the earliest memories, it's the place mm -hmm. that I find, um, mm -hmm. I plug, recharge, certainly get together with the people that you love. Um, you know, certainly this this time in our lives is a bit different, um, but I think that we made such a good choice for just getting to hang out with each other and our two pups on the boat, which you can yeah. probably hear now. <laughs> Yeah, they're desperate to get back out on the boat for sure. I'm sure. So yeah, long, long history of boating. And um, I think probably it, this will go down. Finding the Aviara will go down as is probably one of our, I don't know, it, most fun um, endeavors and just a perfect fit for what our life looks like right now. Well, I think you kind of nailed uh, what a lot of people feel, and uh, you know, they in their their earlier years, they they might use a wake boat a lot more, and uh, you know, there's there's so many opportunities there. But as you kind of progress through your lives, and you might things might change, you might just want to bring the dogs out and enjoy a little bit more, do the family life, and uh, I think that that's where that Aviara brand really fits the bill. It's like you still kind of get a lot of those benefits of that Mastercraft brand and, and a lot of them being known for their wake abilities. Um, but then you bring a, a sense of sophistication and you see it down here. This is aviarboats.com, but you get that sense of sophistication and, and just sleek lines and just, you know, space. And so what is it about the Aviara that, that really excites you? And when you saw it, you're like, that's it. Well, I mean, first of all, she's so dang gorgeous. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just yep. a gorgeous boat. We, um, our our sales guy Vincent Martone, which oh, I, yeah. you guys know. I love Vincent. Are. Yeah, he's the best. I mean, a, is. a beyond being a, a fantastic guy, I think he might be the best salesperson I've ever. Met. <laughs> <laughs> but once we um, kind of started working with him a bit, and and we we brought up the Aviar brand and. and 
you know, strangely kismet. He had just started working with them or had been working yeah. for a year or so. Um, and once we took a look at it, you just think I've never seen a boat on the exterior. I've never seen a boat designed like this. Mm -hmm. He said to us early on, he said, um, do you guys enjoy people asking you about your boat? You know, you want people to ask what's going on and, and what kind of boat that is. And we were both like, no, we're kind of private. Like, it's not, we don't really, you know, we're not, we're not driving around so the people that will look at us. Get you. Mm -hmm. And he was like, sorry, <laughs> you know, it's, gonna happen. it's just gonna happen. So yeah, um, of course, every, we have people when we're anchored out on the North beach, um, we have people swim out to us. When oh. we're getting gas, we have people ask if this boat was made in Italy. And, you know, everybody's wow. very intrigued by just the um, exterior design. So she is a truly gorgeous boat. I think, um, you know, from the onset, that is something that it, it really draws you, um, draws you to that mm -hmm. boat. But for me, I mean, the interior, the area. Yeah. The multiple seating areas for relaxing, the ease of entertaining. I have been accused of being a bit obsessed, you know, with the comfort of others to the degree where maybe I'm not having a great time on the boat because you're, you know, always having to ask people to move or slide or mm hand. -hmm. Yeah. That simply isn't the case on, yep. um, on the Aviar because everything is so intuitively designed, so well thought out for this idea of um, being able to entertain a group of people or just to, you know, just to spread out and have a great lunch yeah. Um, yeah. while you're anchored, you know, watching the dogs play. It just has an incredibly intuitive design. And I love that. Uh, I also mm -hmm. love all the cooler space. I mean, <laughs> <come on. laughs> all of the cooler space is amazing. The fact that it can hold three upright um, wine bottles or bottles of bubbly, which is what mm -hmm. we always have out on the boat um, <laughs> that is was a huge selling point i vincent would probably agree with you on that when i saw that uh, i was like yeah that this has to happen for us <laughs> the fact that the um really innovative seating area there are three bar stools yep. right i own a wine bar you know i mean it was meant to be <laughs> So basically all the things that you were kind of looking for in a boat, or there was probably a few things that you didn't even realize you might want. And that, and, and I think that that's, that's what innovation is, right? It's things that, that, you know, you could always give somebody something that they want, but it's the things that they don't even realize they need until it, they're, you're showing it to them. That That's innovation. And clearly Aviar did it with the, uh, the AV32. Yeah, I, I just uh, I think that there the fact that the helm seat is wide enough for both of us to sit almost mm -hmm. always it's my husband driving and the two dogs you know they're sitting. <laughs> um, I, you know I, I there's so many things I love about it the um, probably the biggest selling point for us though that I haven't mentioned is that with the touch of a button we have a sunshade that covers the entire back of the boat yes. yeah um, super important feature for us and and that also ties into the kind of the the grouping of days where we That's thought nice. it might there be you. time um, for us to upgrade. I remember being in the Nautique and and it was right as the kind of um, businesses shut down and we were anchored mm -hmm. out on Mandalay Channel. And I my husband had he had like like a tent and a tarp and we were just kind of all huddled under the shade because we just wanted to spend a day out on the water. Right. The that we had was fantastic, but it certainly wasn't designed for that. And we saw the sunshade. It, I mean, it's a dermatologist dream. <laughs> yes. That's fantastic. It's That's a good way to put it. Everybody. <laughs> no, and it, it's, it, yeah, sun, it, getting out of the sun, it's funny that you mentioned that because it's like a lot of people, they go out on a boat to get in the sun, but there is, I mean, especially down here in the Tampa Bay area, it gets pretty hot. And uh, even in the, the fall and winter seasons, and you do want to just get out of the sun every once in a while. Um, or have that option to do so. Mm -hmm. And also just the amount, I'm looking through the pictures too, the amount of cup holders, like that's, Lisa and I always talk about cup holders. And there's just <laughs> cup holders galore on this boat. Right. There are cup holders in places that I didn't think cup holders could exist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're so, like the ones that, there's the, the picture um, that on the on the lower right, or lower left. In Bottom the, right, yep. Holders, yeah, in the teak. I mean, it's just so beautifully designed. Yeah seemingly a very simple feature that just has this beautiful, I mean, it's a beautiful impact. It's just really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've, I have to know when you are running, where, where's your, if, if the dogs have kicked you out of the, the helm station, what's your next preferred seat? I'm in that corner seat You're in the corner. I'm right in the corner, kind of up yeah. on the, um, on the other side of the, uh, kind of across from the helm seat. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I am kicked back right there. And I'll shift a bit, you know, kind of as the shade moves. But yeah, that's my spot. Yeah. <laughs> there. <laughs> I've always been a bow of the boat kind of gal. I love with the wind in my face. Oh, and yep. Yeah. It's interesting. Yes. That's such a perfect, uh, it's such a spacious area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can, you can certainly lay down, relax, recline. And then sometimes like if we're um, having lunch or something, I put the dogs up, up there and call it the apartment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's so crazy. It, and it's just got a ton of space. So if you do want to, you know, bring some friends out and y'all don't want to be crammed in next to one oh. another, you'd have just a ton of space to just kind of relax away from from others if needed too. and what about the sound system i know that that's a huge thing on these boats is uh do you guys uh you know you got your bluetooth going and you're bumping some tunes absolutely yeah we love the sound system and that's always been something that we on other boats have retrofitted and, and installed speakers and i mean i think that's the, also the beauty of um the innovative design of this boat there i'm not sure there's a single thing they didn't think of you know yeah. it's incredible there aren't things that i am like oh man i wish we uh, maybe we could, you know, look at something aftermarket and put that. We haven't had to do that at all. Love that cooler, by the way. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> I had to show that. Deep enough to hold wine bottles, not completely um, right upright, but I can get almost a case of bubbles oh. in there. It's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> really, really cool. Um, so yes, the sound system is great. Um, you know, it makes me like when we're heading out to the Gulf. It takes us about thirty minutes to get out there. Yeah. And, um, with the twin three fifties, you know, it's really quiet. I mean, it's incredibly quiet. And I don't know, you just feel a lot of times when you are traveling at higher speeds in boats, it's a bit uncomfortable. That certainly isn't the case here. You can hear the music. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The hull is deep enough where the stability is incredible. It's just I don't know. It's just a pleasant experience from start to finish. You're not having to like hold on, like hammer down <laughs> to get out of the golf. Everything is just really smooth and comfortable and nice and that sound system is great i mean we are huge um, music lovers i think some of my favorite times are maybe when we're coming back in down mandalay channel and just you know we love uh, there's so there's so many different kinds of music that we love um but you know a little van morrison yeah, yeah. And then at sunset i mean it's it's magical yeah the, the sound system is incredible well, you, you also make me think that, I mean, just, just hearing you talk about your boat is you, you're thinking of memories that you've made with your boat and with your friends and with your family. And I think that that's what boating's all about, right? It's about an opportunity to get away and make memories with, with people you care about. I 100% agree. And I think that, um, you know, we are in an era of, of some disconnectedness, you know, right now. And, you know, who, long, who knows how long um, that's going to be a couple of really wonderful things that have happened with this boat for us. A, we've talked about that it's big enough that we can get on with a family and everybody can have their space. You know, nobody's too close to one another. And so that's really important right now. But this idea that we've kind of lost a bit of a um, connection with our fellow humans, we are gaining it by connecting with one another. And, you know, we have these days where um, as soon as we leave, we head out to the Gulf we use the windless anchor, drop that. David gets out on the um, beach with the dogs and they run for an hour. The boat is so stable that I, can, I, I leave a yoga mat on there and I can do yoga while they're out running, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the conditions. But I, if there's a big enough space that I can get some yoga in, they're out running, um, you know, everybody gets back in, maybe we have some lunch. And then in 20 minutes, we're at the head of um, Mandalay Channel by the mangroves, drop the anchor. And so you've had this, you know, you've had this great, vibrant experience out on the golf and with mm -hmm. an hour you are in the stillness of of being adjacent to the mangroves yep. mm -hmm. relaxing there is just a i mean a, there are moments on this boat and the amount of time that we can spend on it and the ways we can explore that i could have never imagined and the way that i mean we've had the boat probably a little bit less than a year and we have so many of those memories. Being able to get into the Dunning Causeway and get super close yeah. to her. And then the dogs, you know, their little doggy treadmill. It's like a little rehab for them where they're in, you know, like three feet of water and swimming around. Uh -huh. We spend doing that. And I think um, we spend, we have uh, friends with young kids and they get to just pop out and dig in the sand. And mm -hmm. it, it's effortless. Yep. In a way that we never imagined having those experiences could be. Yeah. Well said. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I, I know you listed a couple just there, uh, but what are what, where's your most favorite place to go in your boat? I would say right now, um, we've taken it down to, uh, our first big trip was down to um, Longboat Key, and that was a great trip. Ah, yes. Yeah, that was so fun. And then we've also taken it down to um, downtown St. Pete, the Vinoy Marina, and then stayed Ooh. overnight at the Vinoy. And so that is, that's actually such an easy trip. Um, I, you know, that's one that's definitely going to be on repeat for us. Yeah. Any given Saturday or Sunday, we head out of here at probably around 11 a.m. And then we go over to North Beach um, to where the dog friendly area is. So just okay. before we get to Caladesi, anchor there um, and spend, you know, if the water is, you know, if the water isn't too rough, we spend hours there mm -hmm. and you just get, it's just this moment where, you're immersed in the, the sea life, the dolphins. I mean, there was a massive manatee that swam by the other day. I mean, like massive manatee, eight to 10 feet long. And you know, you've got the situation where you're just in this kind of like floating luxury hotel room. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> we have the best time doing that. Um, so I think that certainly for a trip a little bit further away for us uh, would be downtown St. Pete, but we yeah. are really enjoying our backyard right now in a way that we, never really have, you know, when we would go out on the wakeboard boat, you go out, you, you know, everybody takes their turn, you wakeboard, wake surf, and then you come back in. There really isn't a need to come back in. When you're done playing, you have this opportunity to really relax and enjoy um, the rest of your boat. And then mm -hmm. the fact that it's a day boat and the fact that it has such a, an amazing head on it, you, there, there aren't really very many reasons that you need to go back. Maybe you right. Grab more bottles of bubbles, but <laughs> I, I don't know if they show this in the video. But that aft storage, the touch of a button, and that entire seating area comes out. Uh huh. Oh, you know, I've got excess cases of water, <laughs> <laughs> so that is also one of my favorite features. Oh my gosh, I, I forgot about that too. You just said that, it's that's incredible. Funny. Yeah, and we also, you know, we have a, a surfboard down there, we've got a wakeboard down yes. there. Um, there, I, I you, we probably have only filled it, I would say less than half. And I can't even think of anything else we'd put in it. Maybe my husband's foil board, if it's, we could take it apart and get it in here. <laughs> Who knows, you know, just in case he still wants to do a little recreational activity out there. Um, sometimes he needs to work the crazy out. So I'm totally up for that. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Well, you know, the Florida Keys aren't that far away. I know Marine Max do, they do getaways down there sometimes. That could be your next, like, real adventure maybe for 2021 i'm thinking that would be amazing we have um you know done the keys a couple of times but never by water and mm -hmm. i feel like once we're down there we we do we've always felt a little landlocked so vincent has um he's recommended that we take a look at doing some of those trips i think we're uh -huh. done yeah i have been on a few i know kelly's been on on a few as well so much fun so much fun. And it's just, I mean, it's not like just a great group of people as well. I think it would be, yeah, that would be an incredible experience. Yeah. It's fun because you automatically have something in common with everybody on, on that trip and it's, you love boating and everybody has a different boat and you're just kind of talking about it. You can talk about the run down, the run back. What are we going to do while we're there? Uh, highly recommend. I know we'll, we'll get Vincent. I'll tell him to peer pressure you guys to get, to get on something or peer pressure him to make sure he's leading a trip to the keys Excellent. this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, another beauty uh, of that trip too, especially for where you are is, you know, there's, there's places along the way that you could stay. If you ever want to stay, you know, stop off in Naples for the night or, or, or down in, uh, I mean, anywhere along the way, there's pretty much places that you can kind of stop and hang out. And if you ever want to just fill up with ice and drinks and stuff like that, I know like what well, we got Venice, uh, Lisa, yep, we have Marie Max Venice. I mean, yeah, we got a Marie Max all the way down that coast. <laughs> oh, <I didn't> <laughs> Anything that. goes wrong. It's really fun. Yeah, just kind of hopping all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Fill up with fuel, anything you need to do. Well, I mean, you know, it's interesting you talk about um, staying overnight at places. And that's really kind of, that's exactly, that's the, another reason this boat was perfect for us. It didn't have a cabin. Um, we didn't feel like we needed that. We didn't want to waste the space on that. Although, you know, as I look at the 36 and the 40, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think there's a single bit of wasted space. I mean, they're just so brilliantly designed. And we have talked about that. I mean, I think that we are officially in a relationship with Aviara <laughs> not sure yeah. um, ever again. And our dock wouldn't accommodate anything bigger than what we have right now. Plus, this is this is plenty big for us, especially mm -hmm. from, you know, living in the land of like a 23 foot um, right. Right boat it's 
plenty of space for us. But, you know, whenever we have to replace the dock, probably five, right. five, five eight years, yeah. that three, six um, and the 40, we just maximize that entertaining space. I mean, what, <laughs> I think I would get an additional refrigerator, right? We need yep. a grill. I think that would be kind of epic. So, well, yeah, I think I'll be our for life here. You also mentioned, uh, you know, doing yoga out back. I think with the 40, the amount of space when you fold down the oh sides, you probably fit three or four people. You over there. Class. Oh, okay. That, yeah, <laughs> that's really good. I'm in. Sold. Sold. <laughs> you also did mention. Our, our, uh, our lift and dock are 10 years old, so we're not that far from having to, to make some major repairs. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you, you mentioned too, especially with Mastercraft, is uh, they're very customizable boats uh, in terms of their colors and all their options. And I think Aviara is also uh, kind of following suit with that, with with the amount of options you mentioned. You know, maybe you want some a different fridge or something. But I know that no matter what, uh, they have options to choose from. And in a lot of boats, you're kind of stuck with this is what you get. But Aviara is kind of the opposite. They're they're breaking through that and just saying, hey. You want a different color interior, you want a different color exterior, outboards, you name it, you know, you, you have options. Yeah, I mean, and I know on the website you can um, build your boat, which I'm sure my husband did. A <laughs> uh, but we were lucky enough to find the exact color combination that we wanted down in Miami. And then you guys traded it up for us. But yeah, we've got the navy blue with the um, tan interior. Nice. Uh, that's it. It's just, a, it's a dream color for us. We absolutely love it. That's it's a gorgeous. Good it just it screams luxury on the water, and that's why people will constantly ask you, "What is that? <laughs> is that from Italy? Is that an Italian thing?" <laughs> Actually, no, Tennessee. I know. Yeah. I, I think it's incredible. I was reading that they're going to start making the boats um, just south of us now, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's yes. super exciting. But yeah, we like to just shock people a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like you found the perfect bow. And as a consummate entertainer, um, I know you you mentioned it earlier. You you are owner of Clearwater Wine Bar, and so I I'm you know obviously doing my research uh, prior to the interview, and I'm like, oh, I must know more about Clearwater Wine Bar. So, uh, can we talk about a little bit about uh, your business? Absolutely, I would just yeah. tell you more. Uh, Clearwater <laughs> Wine Bar and Bistro. So we are 14 and a half years old. Which, you know, yeah, there are days when I can't believe that I've owned it for 14 years. And then there are other days where like, whoo, feels like 20. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, I think that's pretty typical in the restaurant business. Um, we, this is the, the location that you see with our um, website. That's our new location that we've been in for a, a, just about two years. Okay. So it's got kind of a really beachy, boaty kind of vibe. My husband's pictures are up on the wall and they're all pictures of our trip. Um, most of them are pictures of our trip to the BBIs um, that we did some um, up in Montauk. So yeah, we're obsessed with water on every level. But, <laughs> um, we have a lot of, obviously, so we are one block away from the bay and we are about two blocks away from the beach. So no. perfectly positioned, um, certainly not your typical beach bar situation. We've got about 50 wines by the glass, gosh, about 300 bottle selections. Wow. Been, um, the Wine Spectator Award since we opened. Mm -hmm. nice. I think our first one was 2007 and we opened like mid 2006. Um, so really something for, I think, the I all the dream. Well, I mean, I'm not sure that I had this dream forever, but as we conceptualized what we'd like to do, um, you know, the dream was to offer a ton of things by the glass so that you could explore different areas of the world um, with, you know, without leaving your bar stool, which is yeah. part of the thing I love about um, about wine and about the culture that is associated with it, um, about the history that's associated with it. In addition to you know, just being pretty having awesome. a good time. Yeah, yeah. At the time. Yeah. So um, I've had the same two full-time employees my entire 14 years. So we oh, wow. are a family. Wow. It's that's been incredible. And so we try to do everything we can to think outside the box, really meet our customers where they are. And um, during this, you know, kind of pandemic time, we don't see our customers as much as we would like to. Many mm -hmm. of them are out on their boats, which is amazing. I mean, it's something that I'm certainly doing more of as well. So I started thinking about and I have to say, I was completely inspired by the entertaining area on the Aviara when we first got it. Um, just the idea that you were, I was able to sit out a cheese plate or sit out a really nice salad, um, that you weren't just kind of pulling things out of a cooler and uh, you know asking people to <laughs> hold this for me, that you had this right. space. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we 
maybe it could provide something for our customers that had boats or had a space for eating or entertaining that was a little bit um, fancy, you know? Right, a higher end, I get it. Higher end, delicious, fresh. I, we don't get any food trucks. We do all of our own sourcing, uh, sourcing of our ingredients. Um, so to have something really fresh out on the water, like a salad that's covered in blueberries and strawberries and turkey breast and avocado over spring mix, something that you wouldn't normally associate with um, being able to be out on the water. But we were spending so much time out on the water, that's exactly what we were craving. So we came up with this idea of thermostatic <laughs> packs. Um, and I used the Aviar fridge to kind of see what size would work. Because ah. it's, not a, it's not a massive fridge like you get on no. anything. So it was just a great idea for me to kind of stick a tray in there and see how I could turn it around to keep it cold, but also work in a way that if you put it on top of a cooler, nothing gets soggy or wet. I mean, that's the worst mm -hmm. Yes, when you're dealing with food and boating, especially a full day, especially in the temperatures that we have. So these gourmet picnic packs, I feel like they are perfect for boating, but we know that our customers are celebrating big and small moments because mm -hmm. look at it, why not, right? And they're uh -huh. doing it on their boats, on their patios, out by their pools. And that was the goal to create something that is completely customizable. Um, is going to be completely delicious and going to be as effortless as I can possibly make it. Mm -hmm. And the Aviar design, well, thank you Aviar design team for helping with that because it was a huge inspiration on how we could create a really memorable experience for our customers um, where they just, you know, they weren't having to do all the work. We are, we are more than happy to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> Nope, that's excellent. I remember my mom packing coolers and it was cheese and crackers and some, you know, cocktails, you know, juice boxes for the kids. But we we had the ski boat situation where you'd have to like get things out of the cooler and then turn the cooler over and then put everything on the top of the cooler because that was our table. Yeah. And you <laughs> upgrade to a luxurious Aviara, you have a legitimate entertainment section. And a lot of boats do now. Yep. Absolutely. And I, you know, I'll flip through whenever I see um, um, any of the Aviara um, posts on social media and, you know, I'm taking inspiration from what they're doing. I mean, I love seeing the boats up, up um, outside Manhattan because, you know, we love Manhattan and I love seeing them on the Hudson River. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that, that is a beautiful cutting board. I'm going to need to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so and the storage on there, um, on our boat um, in particular, we talked about that cooler. It holds mm -hmm. so many things. Um, and then you have the additional cooler that flips up right behind that home seat, and that has three bottle holders. So you just pop those in, put ice um, in and around it. It drains on its own, you know, so you're not, you know, dumping it out when you're done. It drains on its own. The cooler drains on its own. I mean, it, it, the, I think the intuitive design on the entertaining side is is so fantastic, but you, you don't lose anything in performance. And so I, I mean, yeah. Everyone is happy. I I think the team. I just think the team. They they did some magical work there for sure. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did indeed. Well, I mean, Lisa, what a joy I'm, to I'm have you. I'm again stuck looking at different options oh. and colors too because you Kelly does love build the boat. Well, we, yeah, uh, kindred spirits here with my husband. He's certainly. <laughs> oh, and speaking of, you know, one of the um, design parts, I think that is pretty innovative is that joystick um, control. That mm -hmm. you oh yeah. Joystick piloting. I, I tend to call it the marriage saver. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, because having had ski boats, you know, they only back to one side. There's always, you know, there's always the problem. And yep. so when he, it's called the sky hook feature. Right? Sky hook, like, holds you in place. Um, yeah, so let's just say we roll up onto the North Beach and he gets it exactly where he wants it. We take a look at the depth. You can read the depth and I don't, Probably a multiple, like four or more different spots, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that helm display is amazing. And yeah. he hits it where he wants, hits the sky hook. I take over um, so that, you know, he's not having to say, oh, scoot it up a little bit, scoot it back a little bit. Yeah. So it stays in place. It's just genius. It's I crazy. Know a lot of bigger boats have this feature where the engines kind of go back. And, and this is a super technical description. The engines go back. <laughs> yeah. But it keeps you in place. And then he hits the button on the windlass. We get the anchor down, you know, just a, just a tad bit more maneuvering and you're done. And I mean, we've been boating together for the entirety of our married lives. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to, this feature, <laughs> we're looking at 25 more. For sure. <laughs> for <All right>. sure. <laughs> 
Well, well, shout out to Mercury, of course, for that one. So yeah. they, they got some crazy in, in the Raymarine systems that you're working with, too. It's just it's crazy the amount of tech that they're putting in these boats these days. Yeah, we are very pleased with that. And especially when you have a, you know, a, a tech loving other half, it just yep. I mean, there's just hours and hours of entertainment. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you really want to talk about that you know the people out there should know about Aviara? Yeah, I, what's, what's I think we did a good job. Think, what's one thing that you would give to potential, you know, uh, boaters that are looking at a new boat to say, you know what, Aviara might be for you? I would say don't let the um, the beauty of this boat um, deter you from the the high function, um, stability, uh, speed, all of the, you know, I think when you're looking um, at a boat, you're certainly looking at multiple factors mm -hmm. and the comfort here, it there, nothing is lost in the performance. I think it mm -hmm. certainly delivers on both sides. And I think a lot of times we do, um, have to make some different choices if you want higher performance maybe you get less comfort um but certainly we do not um do any fishing so we don't we don't have a need for that and where the aviar i don't you know i'm sure you can fish off of it i'm sure many people do um every place that you would have this innovation and kind of a fishing situation they have just replaced with extreme comfort and entertaining and um stability i think we with vincent we were running at about 40 and i was just kind of standing leaning up against um you know up against uh part the part right behind the helm there's just such stability and performance yeah there. and of course you know vincent's kind of a speed guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we were, you know, making some good loot. He was, he was yeah. showing you what it was capable of. That's exactly, uh, exactly right. In big ways. He's all about the performance too. So yeah. um, I think that you you don't suffer any performance. If anything, the comfort enhances the performance because you're just able to really enjoy every piece of this boat. We talk about a lot that we've never used a boat as much as we use this one. So it's that ease of use that I think is incredible. You could have a beautiful boat sitting out behind your um, house, but you never use it because it's just so, there's just so much drama involved in getting it off a lift or getting it out or getting it back on the lift. Right. That holistic control, I mean, it almost acts as if we have thrusters. So when we're trying to, you know, if we've got crazy currents going on, getting it, there were moments in life where we couldn't take the boat out because we would take a look at the current and we knew that it was going to be a really difficult situation getting out of it. You never want that. Right. So you've got all of these incredible performance features that allow you to effortlessly enjoy your boat. And I think that's something that most boaters are craving. Yes. That's their, yep. That should be their new tag, tagline, Aviara. Effortlessly enjoyable. <laughs> I love it. Like I think it. It's perfect. <laughs> Certainly the way we feel about it. And you, you know, you could take it out for an hour, you could take it out for eight hours. I think that that's mm -hmm. also something that is just a really cool feature of this boat. I think, um, yeah, like I said, we're hooked. We love it. Yay. Well, so happy that you're enjoying it as much as you are. Uh, yep. It's always kind of scary to go into something new, especially with Aviara being a newer brand, but you know, backed by Mastercraft, you kind of knew it was yeah, a sure thing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good history there for sure. Excellent. Well, Christy, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you actually, viewers, if you'd like to read more, there's mm -hmm. a great article in the Marine Max Lifestyles magazine about Dave and Christy and their boat with some beautiful photos. Uh, it was a fun read. And that's how I first learned about Christy and her family and her love of Aviara. So we had to have her on the program and learn a little sure. bit more. And of course, if you want to check out more about her business, it is clearwaterwinebar.com. Mm -hmm. Correct. I had that right. Clearwaterwinebar.com. So. Com. But, and then on social media, it's the same. Clearwaterwinebar.com. Perfect. Excellent. Lisa, Perfect. I think we could almost just swing by there, you know, later or something <laughs> like that. It's probably about 10, 15 minutes away. I think I'm, eye I'm eyeballing it. It looks like a cute date spot. Idea. Cool. We've got some things to talk about. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Side thank you bar. very much, Chrissy. We appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. All right. Thank you, Christy. We'll see you later. Hopefully out on the water. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, that is awesome. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to think if, um, we've certainly been aboard a few Aviaras, uh, at mm -hmm. docks at Miami boat show and other places. I'm trying to think if we've ever actually been, I've been out on the water once when the AV 32 first launched, but, uh, since then it's always been at a dock. So I think it's time to get back out and, uh, experience that, that Aviara on the water. What do you think, Lisa? 
Add it to the list. I'll call Vincent. Actually, I'll text him right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the guy to talk to. And shout out to Vincent. You know, I mean, everybody who's worked with Vincent uh, over at the Marine Max Clearwater store, he knows his boats and he certainly knows the Aviara brand. So if you're interested in in the Clearwater area, be sure to uh, check Vincent Martone out. Yes, good guy. All right, we're going to flip the script and get into some social tomfoolery. Uh, <laughs> let's get Landon in here. I, I love this segment. I And you've got your Aviara. Oh, <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm repping because, you know, Christy's, Christy's passion for Aviara is very infectious. Not that I need it. I have, I fell in love with Aviara just from exactly what she was saying, that exterior mm -hmm. look to the boat right away. is It's different and it's Honestly, it's it looks so good on the water. It's the perfect yeah. idea of like luxurious boat feel. But okay, and so quick funny super tacky. I love the tech. Super, too. Yeah, it's it's the high end, top of the line stuff. And so quick funny yeah. story about Vincent. I hope I hope he doesn't get upset with me by telling this quick story. But we were at the Miami Boat Show back in 2018, and this was about the time when Aviar was like brand new, like brand new mm -hmm. just with the 32. And um, so we're at the Miami Boat Show, and he was able to sell two. Um, Aviara's because there was a guy that he was just uh, Vincent's by himself in the booth. There was a guy that sprints up to the booth, just running full on. And he's like, Vincent, I got to buy this boat right now before my friend gets here and buys the boat because we have a, a bet on who's going to get it first. So <laughs> this guy is sprinting just to, to beat a, a bet with his friend to buy an Aviara. He, he buys it. And then his friend shows up like five minutes later and buys another model from Vincent. Oh man. So oh my gosh. I it's thought good day for I, Vincent and a good day for those guys. Except for great the day guy for here. Vincent. Great day for those folks. I thought that was hilarious that you know people had heard about Aviara before obviously coming to the show and were so excited that they bypassed all of the other brands at the Miami <laughs> boat show, which is the biggest thing around. Yeah. And sprint straight to the Aviara booth. Just such a cool, fun story. Yeah. And oh I'm my sure God. Vincent telling that story made it 10 times better too, right? <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. So yeah, shout out to Vincent again. What, what a good guy. So yeah. Awesome. So shifting gears here, we'll go into some social media stuff. And I, I did intentionally wear this shirt once again, because we are going to be talking all about fishing. And so awesome. this first video that we have is is from the animal side of things with a whale that is uh, is feeding out in uh, Thailand. Let me bring it full screen here and you can kind of talk about it for all those audio viewers or audio listeners out there. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Lisa, what? go ahead and tell the, the audio listeners what we're looking at. What are we looking at? <laughs> okay. So this appears to be a, a whale and his mouth is open and just above the surface and he has scooped up all this fish and they are Watching jumping, that. actively jumping out of his mouth. <gasps> oh, and now he's swallowing them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's like um, nature's finest uh, uh, fishing net right there. Look at Wait, that. Okay, so time out. Why did he pause at the top of of the water and just sit there like that? Okay, so that's actually kind of a sadder side of things. So oh. whales are are not typically known to. Well, this specific type, an Eden whale, I believe, is not mm. typically known to perform this type of feeding. Normally, they're under the water and they scoop up fish in their mouth as they go along, but. Unfortunately, in the Gulf of Thailand, things have become so toxic due to the oh. environmental waste that have been gone into the water. Um, a lot of the fish that the whale feeds on right here are now living kind of at the very surface of the water because they can't go down deeper or go into other areas of the water. So now what the whales are, are being forced to do is they're relearning how to feed and they're going up to they're treading water at the top at the surface yeah. and they leave their mouth up above the surface of the water you know, kind of creating a vacuum for the fish to go down inside, you know, their mouth. So it's, it's an, you know, it's, it's a sad thing, the reason why they're, they're doing this, but it's incredibly interesting to look at. I mean, just the way animals are able to adapt to the environment and to different feeding situations to do what they got to do. So this is the result, this kind of neat video here. Yeah. And it looks like he's been doing this for, for many, many years. I mean, this is like, so look at what, he has like his mouth above the water a little bit. So basically nothing can really escape and everything that is jumping, is usually jumping right into the mouth. So, I mean, that's a pretty well-tuned uh, animal right there to, to, to come oh, up yeah, with right? that idea. Well, so, and you see his buddy right behind him. Uh, there and he's laughing be at his buddy problem. like, hey, <laughs> you haven't figured this one what out. What a meal yet. though, man. Yeah. Just that big of a you know meal all at once, as soon as you swallow, that's, you know, you're full, you're good to go. But I'm sure that whale, that's like... <laughs> 
he's doing this a yeah. hundred times a day. Yeah, I think if you like read the stats on like how much they consume per day, like the amount of like pounds of fish or something, it's just insane. Like it's to to, to see what the numbers are. It's insane. Right, right. So going from the animal side of things where the animals are learning how to fish, (laughs) us humans have always been trying to adapt. And sometimes we adapt to certain climate situations to figure out how we can fish. So we're going to jump over to some ice fishing, a video. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where this is. Probably but, uh, we <laughs> we can talk about what this guy is about to pull up out of the water here. Oh, yeah, we'd I'm like excited. to hear from all of you what you think this was that he pulled out of the uh, the ice here. This certainly well equipped. So we're looking at a a guy that's in a tent. He's got, I mean, he's got his diet Coca Cola. He's all set and prepped. <laughs> he's got his hole in the ice and he's fishing away. So, and from what I hear, this is a long haul sort of event. I mean, you're you're doing this for hours, if not days. It's a camping situation where you're sleeping sometimes. Yep. Yeah, and it's well. Let's see what he. Oh he my gosh, he's something's fighting him for sure. He knows. I am guy. nervous. Yeah, it, the video is definitely time to to add suspense as mm-hmm. you're waiting for him to pull something <laughs> huge out of the water. Apparently, it's gonna be a boot. <laughs> it's, it's always a boot, right? Not a oh boot. Oh my Whoa. gosh. Whoa. That's a monster. Wow. What is that, that, Kelly? Well, so I am hoping that the um that the viewers out there can can tell us what that is. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Um, but I always like to hear from our, our viewers out there. This one looks a little different for some reason than I would typically I was telling Landon before we, we were on today um that I'm used to. Typically mm-hmm. it would have some tiger stripes, like some stripes, but um yeah, love to hear what you guys think. Certainly in the uh, the Pike family, and uh, love to hear it. No, this is a yeah, g- great point, Kelly. And I'm I I'm again I'm rocking this shirt that you guys <laughs> got me. But again, I don't know anything about fishing. But Kelly, it seems like you certainly do because I actually did look at the comments on this post that I found on Reddit um, to try to figure out what kind of fish this is. And a lot of people right away would say this is a muskie, right? Muskie. But, um, some of the comments say, well, if you look at the tail, it's a dev dead giveaway that it's not a muskie. Um, so if you're looking at the tail, the tail looks like it's a pike 100%, but apparently the colorization is completely off to be a pike. Yeah. So that's where people are going back and forth on like, if it's a pike, the color is super weird. And actually, there was one comment that said, um, Wikipedia says there is now a known mutation of pike. It's mm-hmm. called silver pike. So that could be our answer. Yeah, I think we'd have to do some more research because, because yeah, they definitely, I mean, musky have pronounced stripes. I mean, this one, it might just be the, the the lighting or something, and it just looks a little different. But there there have been known, I think, even like hybrids of like northern pike and musky or something like that, too. So maybe. Interesting. So what you're 50, you 50 of both. Who knows? There's mutations going on all around at this point. But yeah, what a what a cool video there. So. Yeah. Wow. And and you did mention. I mean, this is something that, of course, our northern uh, boaters. This is what you got to do in the in, in the winter time. You know, if you're if uh, the, the ice is frozen, you got to get out there and do some fishing somehow. So, uh, shout out to all those uh, ice fishermen who. You did mention it is an overnight thing. They can stay overnight, you know, multiple nights. Uh-huh. And it, some of these ice shacks are just like little hotels. Like you can literally, like you know, have a couple friends out there, drink some beer, hang out for a couple days. And yeah, I mean, I've it's incredible. I've seen videos of people taking legit drills that they're mm-hmm. they're going into the ground, but then they build a hut, you know, with wood and everything. I mean, they're building these huts out on the ice because the yeah. ice is obviously where they live is strong enough to with withhold all that weight and and everything i mean it's a it's an endeavor it's a journey so if anybody ever wants to invite me i'm not going to be fishing but i'll definitely you know sing some songs and let the time go by experience it yeah be annoying yeah fishers gotta fish ain't no ice stopping them right Mm -mm. hey the the huts are the the lightest thing they probably bring out on the ice you ever see them with the trucks they'll just bring a ton of different trucks drive straight out on the ice in the middle of the lake it's incredible Yeah. It is incredible. So fun fact in Michigan, I, so I grew up in Vicksburg, Michigan, tiny little town. And one of the lakes would freeze over and they would do ice golfing. They'd set up a whole golf course on. So like it was around Super Bowl. They'd set up a golf course on the ice. And of course, a big bar that they would make out of snow and ice. And they'd make shot glasses out of ice. And it was just a whole ice day. That's incredible. It was, it was so much fun. I only did it uh, twice. It's yep. cold, obviously, you know, dress appropriately, yep. but wow. you've got, you've got the guys that have, um, you got to play around with the, um, the ice fishing shacks. 
That's, That's awesome. incredible. I've never heard of that. And from it, what it, I know about Michiganders, it, it's almost not too surprising. You know, we have yeah. Florida man and then you have Michigan man. So it <laughs> sounds like Michigan man is doing some ice golfing. Meaning we're cool. really ingenious and, and inventive, right? Of course. Of course. Your surroundings. <laughs> no, that's really cool. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> All right. Well, that, I mean. That's a good way. That's a good segue yeah. to uh, the end of another great episode, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, well, big thank you to Christy Lamb for joining us and, and telling us all about her experience uh, in boating. It sounds like they have found the perfect vessel and are going to be amazing brand advocates for Aviara. Oh, for sure. All right. So, Landon, any other final thoughts from you? Uh, everybody go to aviara.com and check out their boats. I mean, it's pretty incredible stuff. You can customize and, and check it out. I, like I said, I'm sold. I <laughs> Number one favorite brand for me is Aviara. It's It's really cool. All right. Kelly, what about you? No, just uh, that was a, a good episode. Uh, you know, I love talking all things Aviara. So be sure to, to I always recommend check out aviaraboats.com. Get on there and, and build your own because it's always fun to just build your own. Uh, you know, you can choose what outboard color, you can choose what color interior, exterior, sound system, coloring, all that kind of stuff. So be sure to check it out. Aviaraboats.com or marimax.com to uh, find one that might be might be in stock. We'll see. There you go. You got to build it. Yep. Build it. They will come. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. You can see or hear more episodes of Boating Broadcasts and our sister podcast, Boating Tips Live, on everywhere. Facebook, YouTube. Uh, the Marine Max Lifestyle blog is probably one of the best places where it's all kind of together. You can access that online or through the Marine Max app. Uh, we are also on your favorite podcasting platform, and we would love to hear from you. Please comment. We've got some forms on our website if you have ideas or you'd like to be a guest. Submit your information. We'll get it. We'll, we'll do a little bit of research and contact you. And if you're curious about anything you've heard today, we will link to everything in the transcript of a today's episode so you can learn more about Aviara and all the fun things that we've covered today. Uh, thank you very much. We hope you stay healthy and boat happy. We will see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.